This is Twit. I think it's quite instructive from a security viewpoint to watch how Zoom deals with all of the various consequences of the overnight explosion in the popularity of their platform. Even though it had been around since 2011, um, if their response had been lame, it wouldn't be interesting. But so far, they've been anything but lame. Their response has been very impressive. Um, and the past week brings us some even more impressive news. Um, uh, last week, they announced that they had hired Luta Security, which was founded by Katie Mosuris, a well-known cybersecurity veteran. Katie created some of the most important vulnerability programs still running today. She started Microsoft's vulnerability research and Symantec's vulnerability research. She's really good. And, I'm so thrilled to hear this. This is great. Yes. And the bug bounty programs for Microsoft and the Pentagon. She has been given a free hand to rebuild Zoom's existing security program, which had previously been based on HackerOne. So she's now taking input from across the entire cybersecurity community seeking any ways, all suggestions welcome, to improve Zoom's vulnerability disclosure process. In her own posting about this new assignment last week, she wrote, no company can bug bounty their way to being secure. And we at Luta Security emphasize building strong internal engineering to reduce the number and severity of vulnerabilities before software is released, as what well a, as what being a concept. <laughs> what an idea! Who who'd ever what thought fun. about that? Yeah, <laughs> she said, as well as being capable of fixing bugs efficiently when they do slip through security development practices. When the pandemic hit, we were already wrapping up a full internal vulnerability coordination and management maturity assessment against ISO 30111 with Zoom, which is interesting. I didn't realize. I mean, they were, Zoom was already, before this was happening, saying, you know, we want to be proactive about this. So they were already there. So she said, so that's where the real change has to happen internally. One of the five capability areas Luta Security measures is organizational. This is this is the executive the executive will to change company culture, which we are all fortunate enough to witness with Zoom in real time. She said it's putting effort into investing properly in security and privacy, not just with words not just by bringing in big names in security or jacking up bug bounty prices in a frenzy to create the appearance of diligence. She said, that being said, increased transparency from the many experts who are working together with Zoom to bring the very best security help gives the folks watching this effort a chance to see changes unfold. She finishes, in cases like Luda Security's work with Zoom, we now get to ask the public for feedback on Zoom's bug bounties. And then she said, well, I ask, who were these big names in security Katie was referring to? Her follow-on tweet last Thursday read, I'm excited to highlight my colleagues who are adding their expertise in the next few weeks, in addition to welcoming, welcoming my former colleague, Alex Stamos, who we spoke of last week, to the extended Zoom security family, I'd like to welcome, and then we have a series of Twitter handles, Leah Kistner, Matthew Green, Bishop Fox, NCC Group InfoSec, and Trail of Bits. She tweeted that on the 16th. So uh, Leah Kistner was the former global lead of privacy technology for Google. We all know cryptographer and Johns Hopkins professor Matthew Green. He's now on the team. And then there are three well-known security auditing firms, Bishop Fox, the NCC Group, 
and trail of bits. So perhaps some auditing is in the works as well, as I was saying last week, I hoped would also be happening. So uh, to maintain a high degree of operating transparency, Zoom's CEO, Eric Wan, has started hosting a weekly Ask Eric Anything webinar. Um, during last week's webinar, we learned a few more things. Uh, that He shared during this a, a past week and this ne and next week timeline, talk, but basically everything we've covered in the past week, changing defaults, uh, hiding the meeting ID, the security icon, icon added to the toolbar, uh, disabling... Uh, or disabled renaming participants, cloud recording, Zoom chat, dashboard enhancements, and also password complexity, something we hadn't talked about before. Um, and they're, they've add, they're adding a few more things going forward. Uh, account owners and admins can now configure minimum meeting password requirements to include numbers, letters, special characters, allow only numeric passwords. In the, in, in the past, it was possible just to use a number. So now they've made passwords much stronger. Um, uh, and free basic account users will now also be able to use alphanumeric passwords by default rather than numeric passwords. Last Saturday, account admins acquired the ability to choose to have their data routed through specific data center regions geographically, giving them control of their interactions with Zoom's global network. This feature is intended to help with fears that Zoom chats and encryption keys might be spending some time over in China. So admins can override that um, you know, non-specific behavior and specify where they want things to go. And then on Sunday, two days ago, the system added the ability to report abusive users so that Zoom can shut down accounts engaging in Zoom bombing. And that's a very quick automated process where you can just tag somebody who is Zoom bombing and Zoom will immediately be able to, to take some measures in order to, to thwart them. Um, he also, oh, and, and then during the same webinar, Alex was present, Alex Stamos, and he announced that in a matter of weeks, they'll be moving from Zoom's currently, uh, it's probably fair to call it, barely adequate call encryption to a more widely tested and trusted solution. Specifically, Alex said that Zoom will be moving away from the current AES-256 ECB, remember that's the electronic code book encryption, to a more secure AES-256 GCM encryption, which by the way, is what Squirrel uses to encrypt its identities. So, you know, that is a good choice for them to, to uh, jump to. And Alex also noted that in the, he said, the long-term focus will involve, involve a totally new cryptographic design that greatly reduces risk to Zoom's system. So uh, to me, Zoom's response looks like a business management school case study in the proper way to engage and manage the explosive growth of a highly used, highly targeted, and inherently ab abuse-prone online facility. So again, uh, I say bravo to Zoom. I just think they're doing everything right. Uh, but <laughs> there is a, always a dark side. Meanwhile, more than... 500,000 Zoom meeting IDs and passwords are currently for sale. Apparently, someone's been sucking them up using automated bots on the net. And as we know, there's also been, there, there was a essentially a robo-dialer that was able to, to look for Zoom meetings based on ID and was, was finding a handful every hour. Uh, the price is not very high. For these meeting IDs and password, um, apparently about a tenth of a cent, a U.S. cent each, uh, to no one's surprise, a black market for Zoom meeting IDs and passwords has quickly sprung into existence. And we can assume since the price is so low that even the seller knows there's not much value there. 
Uh, the credentials are gathered through credential stuffing attacks uh, and just, you know, scraping social media for any mention of IDs and passwords. Yeah. So I mean, almost huge, certainly worthless. We ch every meeting yes. we do is a new uh, ID. So unless yes. you had a standing meeting and you never bothered changing the ID or something, that's worthless. Yes, unless that was completely static. Um, but on the other end of the pay scale, Motherboard reports that people who trade in zero-day exploits are sure there are two Zoom zero days, one for Windows and one for Mac OS, currently on the market at an asking price of half a million dollars. <laughs> so, you know, yes, uh, IDs and passwords are worthless. These guys, although informed people believe that's still very overpriced. Um, uh, so here's what we know. Hackers are selling two critical vulnerabilities for Zoom, which would allow someone to hack users and eavesdrop on their calls. According to three independent motherboard sources who are knowledgeable about the market for these kinds of hacks, um, one each reportedly exists for the Zoom client for Windows and another for the Zoom Mac OS client. The sources had not seen the code for the vulnerabilities, but have been, in co have been contacted by brokers offering them for sale. Motherboard had previously reported that there, that there had been a sudden increase in interest in zero days for Zoom after, as we know, hundreds of millions of people, including employees and executives at big companies around the world, had moved onto the platform and were conducting sensitive and, in some cases, confidential meetings. Um, a guy named uh, Adriel Desaults, the former, the, the founder of Netregard, a company that used to sell and trade in zero days, said, from what I've heard, he said, there are two zero-day exploits in circulation for Zoom. One affects Mac OS, the other Windows. He added, I don't expect that these will have a particularly long shelf life because when a zero-day gets used, it gets discovered. Two other independent sources who asked to remain anonymous for, so that they could discuss the sensitive topic confirmed the existence of these two exploits on the market. One of the sources, a veteran of the cybersecurity industry, told Motherboard, the Windows Zero Day is nice. A clean, remote code execution, perfect for industrial espionage. The Zero Day for Zoom on Windows, however, would allow hack hackers to access the app, but would need to be coupled with another bug to access the whole machine. So it sounds like it would need to be you know, joined with a... Uh, probably a privilege elevation bug in order to do more. Uh, the Mac OS flaw is not a remote code execution, according to two anonymous sources. So as I noted at the start, the asking price for these is half a million dollars. According to one of the sources who deals in the procurement of exploits, but has decided not to purchase this one, that source said the exploit requires the hacker to be in a call with the target, making it much less valuable for a government spy agency that is uh, hoping to be stealthy and doesn't want to get caught. Um, to me, this guy sounds like a vulnerability reseller like Zerodium. Uh, he also told Motherboard that he estimated the exploit was worth about half the asking price in terms of what the market will bear. Uh, and the Mac OS, as I said, is not a remote code execution, making it less dangerous and harder to use in a real hack, according to two other anonymous sources. So as for Zoom, especially with their current, you know, very vigilant posture, you can imagine they're not taking this news lying down. When asked, they said, quote, Zoom takes user security extremely seriously since learning of these rumors We've been working around the clock with a reputable industry-leading security firm to investigate them. They said, to date, we have not found any evidence substantiating these claims. So, to, of course, that's what they're going to say. To me, this sounds 
very credible given the fact that it's multiple sourced and the if we believe the sources you know they've had a chance to vet them and decide if they're worth you know like how much they're worth decided they were not worth a half a million dollars so uh anyway that's what's going to happen when there's something like you know with this much overnight popularity and zoom is as we know scrambling to shore up its security to that end though you'd have to say they are taking all the right measures so you know tip of the hat to these guys i really You're do right. think i mean this is thing. almost a this is a textbook example of how you yes. solve this i mean it gives me huge confidence yes. in them frankly they're probably safer than almost anything else once this is complete I agree. I, you know, they've got the best experts in the industry. Yeah. They're there. It looks like that they will soon be announcing a, a formal audit throughout their, their system and architecture. And with Matt Green in there uh, and Alex, they're, you know, they're probably going to have someone who they trust uh, take a look at their code. I mean, that's already apparently happening on some level, at least at the API level and say, okay, you know, here's the things we need to fix. So Super smart I agree, because Leo. here's their opportunity, right? Everybody's yes. using them. And if you could give people confidence to say, look, we're, you know, we have stuff that no, we're more secure than anybody else. You know, I don't think any other conferencing system is undergoing audits, security audits right now. I don't know anything nope. like that. Nope. And in fact, in the, in the coverage of this, all and I didn't follow. I didn't add this to, to what I was to, to to my discussion. But all of the articles say we still recommend it. That is, you know, better to have something which is is you know easy to use. You know, and and so uh, the 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 adoption friction is low, which is being fixed. You know, literally yeah. as we speak. Yeah. You're not sharing state secrets. It's probably okay. No. Yes, exactly. 